Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. Special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Heavy smoke blanketing communities near the Riverton City dump this morning resulted in the closure of the Haile Selassie High on Payne Avenue, St. Andrew. TVJ News understands that a teacher at the school fell ill as a result of the smoke. She is receiving medical attention. Classes were dismissed at 7.45. Executive Director of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, Audrey Gordon, said the Riverton dump is not on fire. Last week, the National Environment and Planning Agency said burning in areas close to the disposal site has resulted in negative air quality, disrupted business operations, and caused health problems for residents. There's a mixture of commendation and caution for Major General Anthony Anderson, who was yesterday named as the next police commissioner. Former Commissioner of Police and former Chief of Defense Staff Rear Admiral Hardly Lewin says political support is critical to the success of the new police chief. General Anderson has been the country's national security advisor since December 2016. Admiral Lewin says that post should help him to get adequate support. Not overly concerned about those in the force who love you or don't love you. It's the political support. Now, General Anderson has had quite some time working with the political directorate. He's had some time to reach some common understandings and so on. The other thing that's very important, because you will never get every member of the force falling in line. But let me tell you, the vast majority will. And that is going to be heavily dependent on how General Anderson postures on assuming the, 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 the post of commissioner of police. The Nurses Association of Jamaica NAG has vowed to continue advocating on behalf of its members and patients in relation to their experiences at the Cornwall Regional Hospital. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton announced yesterday that operations have been scaled down at the main building to facilitate repairs to the ventilation system. Nurses have been complaining about an increase in noxious fumes at the facility since last month. NAJ President Carmen Johnson says the issue needs constant monitoring. What we have said is that we don't intend to drop the ball now. Because the thing is, is my nurses are concerned about the patients. Because they will explain to you that, Madam P, sometimes when I see what they treat the patients for, we know that's not what it is. But then we, they, we are not recognizing that the patients too are experiencing the ill effects. And so... What we have said to them is that we are not going to be dropping the ball where we are not monitoring what is happening now wait for our employees to cry out again. But we are seeking to have that dialogue going forward where after each intervention we have a meeting within two weeks to see what's the next step and how we chart the step going forward. Steps have been taken to relocate most of the patients at Cornwall Regional. There are more reactions this afternoon to comments made by Central Manchester Member of Parliament Peter Bunting about the Jamaica Labour Party's Dr. Nigel Clark. Details from TVJ's O'Shane Masters. Member of Parliament-elect for St. Andrew Northwestern Dr. Nigel Clark has further commented on the controversial comments by Central Manchester MP Peter Bunting on Monday. In a video posted to social media site Facebook, Mr. Bunting said, quote, in a sense, he reminds me of the black Englishman of colonial times who aspired to be sort of black royalty, end quote. According to Mr. Bunting, Dr. Clark has, quote, great British education and sort of mimicking the values and the affections of the former colonial masters, end quote. But speaking on TBJ's Smile Jamaica on Wednesday morning, Dr. Clark says while he will not be getting involved in the controversy surrounding the comments by Mr. Bunting about him, he spent most of his time studying in Jamaica, despite having a British education. I went to St. Richard's Primary yes. in, uh, on Red Hills Road. Mm -hmm. I went to Monroe College for mm -hmm. seven years in Malvern, St. Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. I went to the University of the West Indies. I came first in the Caribbean at the University of the West Indies. I got the best degree in the Faculty of Natural Sciences in Jamaica, in Barbados, mm -hmm. and in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. I got a Jamaica scholarship from Monroe to the University of the West Indies. I got a Commonwealth Scholarship from the University of the West Indies to Oxford University, and I got a Rhodes Scholarship. So you're an international you, bright man. If you call that a British education, right. then I would say to you that um, you are not a patriotic Jamaican. 
Dr. Clark, however, noted that despite the comments by the central Manchester MP, the people in the St. Andrew Northwestern constituency have spoken. I think the people of Northwestern Andrew have spoken emphatically. 61% of those who cast their votes cast their votes for me. In any part of the world, that's a landslide, and it represents an increase in the margin in percentage terms over 2016. Uh, I think that speaks volumes. Machine Masters, TVJ News. Meanwhile, Dr. Clark says he will be working to address major issues affecting constituencies. He has been speaking with residents and said they are concerned about bad roads. I plan to address the concerns of the residents. Roads would be the number one uh, priority, and that work has started okay. and it will continue. Clearly, it's not possible to do everything at the same time, mm -hmm. but the work has begun and will continue to address roads. Youth em unemployment is also another issue. I plan to be engaged in youth empowerment, mm -hmm for persons who have not finished their education to get them enrolled or to help them, to point them in directions through which they can complete their education and those who need skills training, mm -hmm. point them in directions where they can uh, access skills training and those who need jobs to try and help to facilitate that. Details have emerged about the planned job cuts at the Golden Grove Sugar Company in St. Thomas. The Bustamante Industrial Trade Union and the University and Allied Workers Union were updated on Friday on the company's plan to cut 70 jobs. It's reported that since the start of the 2017-2018 crop, the factory has been receiving 750 tons of sugarcane daily. This is inadequate to sustain the current staff complement. BITU Allen Supervisor Hanif Brown is disappointed with the company's decision. Yes, but the Monte Industrial Trade Union having been informed by Wind Grove Sugar Company that they intend to make this position redundant. We are extremely disappointed because we believe that, that Golden Grove has not put out the required effort to ensure improvement and sustainability in their operation. It must be noted that this is the restructuring taking place at Golden Grove and the, the signs are imminent that the fields are not being properly cared for and the yields continue to show decline. The Golden Grove Sugar Company said it will operate on two shifts with 141 employees. Of the 70 positions to be cut, 45 are held by contract workers. The final list of employees who will be affected is to be sent to the unions today. Notice and redundancy payments will be made by March 29. The Water Resources Authority says it has been intensifying measures to minimize the impact of climate change on the country's water supply system. Speaking at the JIS think tank session, the company's managing director, Herbert Thomas, says drought has posed a major challenge on water storage. The company is therefore carrying out extensive research to find alternate watersheds in different sections of the island. Our thing is to ensure that development will not negatively impact the water resources. And so what we do, we have to understand clearly the various processes in the whole hydrologic cycle. We have to understand the whole land the situation where we have sinkholes, where we have depressions, where things are located. We have to provide the information on that will define things like flood plain maps that define those areas that are vulnerable to flooding. And based on this, you know, we are in a position to assist other government agencies in the forward planning. Now, TVJ News will focus on the performance of the government in today's RJR Gleaner Group Don Anderson poll. We will look at how respondents rate the performance of the government and Prime Minister Andrew Hoeness since they have been in office. We will also look at the best and worst performing cabinet minister. Field work for the poll was conducted between February 22 and February 26. The Health Foundation, along with the Health Ministry, has launched the Obesity Prevention Public Survey, which showed opinions on health properties in Jamaica. 
This includes their knowledge, attributes and practices with regards to unhealthy diet. Speaking at the launch this morning, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton explained the key findings in the research. The survey has confirmed what we suspected, that a vast majority of Jamaicans, over 80 percent, are concerned about the obesity challenge and its implications for health and wellness. You know, hypertension, cancers, diabetes were big, big, recognized as major issues, major concerns. The other concern, the uh, finding was that they are very concerned about their children, more so than themselves, the adults. And thirdly, that they wanted something to be done. They wanted the government to act. So the government has been tracking and monitoring the situation and providing public education around the obesity challenge for some time. With the Jamaica Moves program is one of the responses to that. What we intend to do going forward, working with our stakeholders, the Ministry of Education as it relates to students, is to look at food and nutrition policy within the school system, which will guide what is offered, what is served, is to launch the Jamaica Moves school version to promote physical activity, and to work with the critical stakeholders, not just administrators and students, but parents and guardians, but also the concessionaires within the schools who provide the foods in order to try and influence a better menu of options for our children. And it's now time to look for a look at what's coming up in this evening's health report. In the next edition of the health report, we look at venous-like ulcers. You can prevent um, venous-like ulcers by actually Exercising for persons who are obese, you'll want to exercise, ensure that you do your calf muscle exercises and to <clears throat> actually, when, you're, when you know that you will be standing for long hours, you can also wear a compression stocking. That's the health report this evening in primetime news. And now for today's healthy living tip. There are a variety of ways you can prevent venous leg ulcers. Quit smoking. Lose weight. Control chronic conditions such as high blood pressure or diabetes. Reduce the amount of salt in your diet. Exercise regularly. Wear compression stockings. And keep your legs elevated when you can. And in sports, even with a third place finish at the recent Central Athletics Championships, former champions Homewood Technical remains confident of challenging for the top spot at this month's Issa Boys and Girls Athletics Championships. Jeremaine Brown reports. Ten-time Issa Girls Champs winners Homewood Technical say, discount them at your own peril. Their last title came in a 2013 upset win, but the Manchester-based school say they are improved for the 2018 season and have the athletes to do the job. Homewood ended fourth at last year's Issa Girls Championships behind Edwin Allen, Heidel and San Diego. But head coach Dave Anderson say they have a renewed confidence. Well, our expectation is always to win. We're a 10-time champion and we want to go to 11, so I'm expecting to try and win this year. Moving from fourth will not be easy, but that is my aim. Coach Anderson says that their main strength will be on the track with an aim of scoring at least 290 points. Well, um, for the last two years, um, second and third and fourth have been close, closer than the winner. So I think we are right there. And last year there was three points difference between third and, and fourth. So we are not far off. And I think this year we have improved in many areas. So I think we are still right there, are ahead of where we were last year. In a squad that boasts the likes of Sashika Steele, Mishe Harriet, and Captain Keneva Headley, there's also Shannon Allison, who was second in the sprint hurdles last year in Class 2. Actually, I'm planning to go for my gold medal this year in the 100 meter hurdles and perform to my best in any other event that I will be doing. But to get it right at champs, Allison says Homewood will have to be a unified force. Keep being focused. Um, work together, unity, yeah, and uh, train harder and perform to their best of their ability. Homewood, with 10 titles overall, is the second winningest school at Girls' Champs, behind Great Technical with 22 titles. The Issa Boys and Girls' Championships will be held from March 20 to 24, with live coverage on TVJ, TVJSN, hits 92 fm and OneSpotMedia.com. And that's the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Do remember to join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.